Well, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. We're literally hours away from the Indiana Trail 100. It starts tomorrow at six in the morning. And uh, right now it's about 11 a.m. Pretty much done packing. Uh, the nerves have kind of started, like the anxiety was really high while packing and it's kind of lowered a little bit to where I feel like I can kind of relax a little bit. I uh, just did some foam rolling and um, I'm gonna do my compression boots here in just a minute. Uh, and then finish up like the last few things, get the car ready and get on the road. I feel like my prep for this race has been okay. It's been pretty good. Um, I know that I haven't been sharing everything on Strava or even that much on like vlogs and stuff recently. Um, there's just been a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes in life in general. I'll definitely fill you in on some of that stuff. One thing that's kind of exciting though that's been taking a lot of my time is that I'm working on this massive documentary right now. And uh, I'll fill you in more as that goes on, but that's taking uh, a lot of my time. As far as running goes, uh, I have had a really good I would say last eight weeks. About six weeks ago, I had a 100 mile week of training, which is the first time ever, which was really awesome. You know, part of that was a 50 mile run that I did, but I also ran 50 miles the rest of the week, you know, which <laughs> not easy. Uh, and then after that, I had, uh, I think I did like a 30 mile week and then a 40 mile week and then kind of back up to 60s. Uh, and then two weeks ago, I had a 70 mile week uh, and then the taper down has been pretty, pretty aggressive. I went down to about 35 miles. And then so far this week, I've only ran eight miles because um, I've really just been trying to relax and just make sure the legs are ready. Uh, and also I've been trying to, um, with my whoop, I've really, really been tracking my sleep and recovery along with my strain over the past, uh, it's been a couple, it's been almost two months that I've been wearing this whoop 24 7 so uh, I'll definitely have a video on it about what I think um, especially after running 100 miles with it training the lead up tapering and then running 100 miles uh, it's actually really interesting the data that I'm seeing from it so as far as the race tomorrow goes it's the Indiana Trail 100 and um, kind of as usual for this race it's raining. It's actually pretty cold and gross outside right now. It's only about 50 degrees, but cloudy, sprinkling, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just gonna be one of those days. So I've been going back kind of trying to mentally prepare. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos about really bad weather trail races, you know, and bad weather at this race is not new to me. I've done this race. This will be my third go around, and uh, two years ago it was raining really, really bad. Uh, about 24 hours ahead of the race through the beginning and first half of the race. Uh, and then last year it was actually really dry. So I've kind of seen both sides of it, but last year it was super cold. It got down to like 28 degrees at night. Uh, so yeah, it won't be that cold um, this time. It's supposed to be in the low 50s most of the time, dipping down to about 45 degrees. I mean, it's gonna be pretty cold. Uh, but as long as I stay moving, uh, as long as I stay hydrated and uh, my nutrition in check, um, I should be okay. Uh, the problem will come if I start walking a lot or start sitting down a lot and stop eating. And speaking of hydration and nutrition, I did want to walk you through everything I will be using during the race. And this is all, uh, basically we've arrived at this, me and my nutrition coach, uh, over the last couple months, we've been working together since Burning River, since that epic failure of uh, nutrition. As we got into it and started looking at it, it was kind of funny how badly I executed it. Uh, and I think my body is just different than a lot of other people. Uh, of course, everyone's unique, but uh, specifically, uh, we kind of landed on some things that I just have different needs uh, with my nutrition than other people do. I'm just gonna go through what I'm gonna be using and uh, maybe you'll be able to find some insight in this, but maybe not too. <laughs> Uh, the main fuel source is gonna be this Scratch Super High Carb Sports Drink Mix. And this has been really, really awesome for me in training over the last couple months. Um, it's 
there it's very very customizable like you can get exactly what you need it's really customizable uh, like the serving suggestion is seven scoops uh, which is a lot I don't use that much but seven scoops will give you 400 calories 400 milligrams of sodium and a hundred carbohydrates uh, so what I do is I cut that uh, to down to five scoops in one bottle so and then that one bottle is going to last me for two hours. So I'm getting about 150 calories per hour and 150 milligrams of sodium per hour from my sports drink. So that's in one bottle. And my other bottle in my vest, I will have just plain water. This is kind of like what we arrived at uh, was that I was just taking in way too much pure sports drink and I wasn't cutting it at all with water in my stomach. So my stomach was having a really hard time processing it all. Um, but the secret to that is like, I'm still going to have problems if I don't add in a lot more electrolytes. So that's where uh, this Hammer Endurolytes Extreme comes in. And I'm going to be taking one of these extreme capsules every 45 minutes, at least for the start. And that gives me 110 milligrams of sodium plus all the electrolytes I need. Uh, so what this has been doing and uh, my experience with it has been that whenever my stomach starts to feel a little sloshy or I'm not processing uh, my drink mix or the water, uh, I take a pill and it within about five to 10 minutes, it really starts helping my digestion a lot. Uh, and this has all worked really, really well in training so far. Um, so then in addition to that, um, about every two to three hours, I'll be taking a science and sport gel. Now, this is just the caffeine version that I grabbed because during my 100 milers, I usually start to have problems staying awake around like 50 to 60 miles. Um, I'll start sleepwalking. Uh, so I'm going to counteract that by starting to take caffeine earlier than that. So probably around like 30 miles-ish to 35, I'll start uh, adding in... Um, Instead of a regular gel, I'll take a gel with caffeine, see how that's going, see how my body's handling that. Uh, and if I need more caffeine, like a huge dose, I do have caffeine pills. Uh, each of these science and sports has 75 milligrams of caffeine, but the caffeine pills have 200 milligrams of caffeine. So if I'm starting to fall asleep, sleepwalking, I will have something to counteract that. The other sort of important thing that we determined with uh, my coach is that um, about every five to six hours, I need to be getting some protein in. So that's where this Tailwind Rebuild Recovery protein mix comes in. Um, and I've been using the Tailwind instead of just kind of like a run of the mill protein powder um, because it does offer a little bit of extra electrolytes and it has been sitting better in my stomach during runs. So this is just one of the packs, but I only take half of this about every five to six hours. So it doesn't seem like a lot. It's only gonna give me five grams of protein, but it is 120 calories. And it's just something that I'm going to shake in a bottle and mix up. So I'm gonna use this in between laps so every 25 miles i'm going to put half of this in a bottle shake it up and drink it and uh, this has really been helping me as well in training so and then just some other add-ons like i have been using these scratch energy chews a lot these have really been great um, and i also have um, some science and sport chews and i have some honey stingers so i've got a couple different options of things like actual food that i might want um, you might laugh this is not actual food of course it's candy but in a race, it's actual food. <laughs> and this has been really helpful in my opinion is, uh, is Ketone IQ. I know this is not sponsored by Ketone IQ. They just sent this out. I have been taking this about uh, every four to six hours on long runs. And then also before a run, I've been testing out to see just how it works with my body. Um, and I have been finding that it does give me a little bit of a boost of energy. But the biggest thing has been kind of like focus that's come about. We describe it sort of like getting in the zone. I don't think for me it hasn't like provided like a ton of energy or any like crazy stimulant or anything like that But it's just kind of been interesting because it has helped me just kind of like mentally focus on what I'm doing uh, For a couple hours actually I have a bunch of bottles of this and I'm gonna be using this kind of like whenever I need to during the race But at least every lap as well So about every four to six hours and then the final thing that I've got that uh, is a little interesting is these uh, hot shots This isn't just specifically for cramps though like it does help with muscle soreness and over time you know during 100 milers you start to get more and more sore so it also helps really wake you up because it is like very spicy <laughs> so that's basically everything that i will be taking in addition to that i'll be uh, grazing on aid stations as i go um, but the main thing 
the biggest change that I've been making over the last couple months working my, with my nutritionist is that uh, I was just taking, I was kind of just like cramming tons and tons of calories in uh, because I thought I had to. And a lot of that comes from listening to podcasts, watching other YouTube videos, and just not listening to my body. Uh, and I'll straight up just tell you that what I do is probably not going to work for you. And what so-and-so on so-and-so podcast does is probably not going to work for you either. You have to figure out what works for you. And sometimes that can be thinking outside of the box. So for me, walking into a hundred miler thinking, okay, I'm only guaranteeing myself in between 150 and 200 calories per hour. A lot of people would be like, that is not nearly enough. Like you're going to die. Like you're going to like, but you know what? That's been working for me. Um, I'll be able to graze as I go. I'll be able to take gels if I need them. So that's just what works for me. Also, the addition of having water and a sports drink to kind of cut each other, but also including that electrolyte pill, the salt pill, that's going to help with digestion. I'm telling you, this has been working great during my 50 miler. A couple weeks ago, I had zero gut issues during all my 25, 30 mile runs over the last couple weeks, zero gut issues. So we are like really, really counting on this to work uh, during this race. Uh, but you know, it might not because who knows what's going to happen after 50 miles? I sure don't. So that's my nutrition for the race. As far as shoes go, I'm planning on using the Nike Ultrafly. Uh, I'm absolutely loving these shoes uh, for the past couple weeks. They've got about 100 miles on them, but I still think they're good. Uh, I still think that they're, you know, they'll be able to handle another 100 miles. Uh, they're also like really dirty. These are actually cleaned. <laughs> like I actually spent time scrubbing them to clean them up. Uh, they get dirty super fast. Uh, the only thing I am concerned with, though, is the outsole. And um, as you can see, these lugs are very short. Um, this shoe was designed to run fast at Western States, not the Indiana Trail 100. Uh, if the Indiana Trail 100 was dry, this would probably do really, really well. But I don't know how wet or sloppy it's going to be. So I'm also bringing uh, my Hoka Tecton X, which has just slightly... Uh, longer lugs on the bottom and then if it gets really bad out there I also have a pair of Hoka Mafates that are just the absolute beast in bad weather so that's the plan Nike Ultrafly possible Hoka Tecton X or Hoka Mafate um, as far as other gear goes I'm wearing a Salomon pack Salomon bottles uh, run rabbit shirt um, John G shorts, darn tough socks. I'm also having crew and pacers for this race, which I'm very excited. My good friends, Matt and Brittany, are coming out again to support me. They were with me at the Burning River 100, and I'm gonna try and get them to pace this time. They did not get to pace at the Burning River, so I'm gonna try to make sure they can pace this time. Thank you all for your support over the years, and especially this year. Uh, it's, you know, it's been a tough year, but uh, we're making it and we're gonna go run 100 miles tomorrow. I have less than 19 hours until the gun goes off, so I need to finish up packing and uh, get on the road. But yeah, if you wanna reach out, you know, comment down below, send me an Instagram message, something like that. Uh, and if you're running the Indiana Trail 100, uh, see you in a couple of hours. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> oh. Okay, bye.